Synopsis of the Books of the Bible Proverbs By J. N. Darby All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 and 17 Synopsis of the Books of the Bible by John Nelson Darby. Proverbs. Chapters 10 to 31. Snares to be avoided, the path to be followed. In Proverbs 10 begin the details which teach those who give ear how to avoid the snares into which the simple might fall, the path to be followed in many cases, and the consequences of men's actions, in short, that which characterizes wisdom in detail, what may be prudence for man divine discretion for the children of God, and also, the result of God's government, whatever appearances may be for a while. It is well to observe, that there is no question of redemption or propitiation in this book, it proposes a walk according to the wisdom of God's government. Wisdom for government, industry and its reward. In the final chapter, Proverb 31, we have the character of a king according to wisdom, and that of the woman in her own house, the king who does not allow himself that which, by darkening his moral discernment through the indulgence of his lusts, would make him unfit to govern. In the woman, we see the persevering and devoted industry which fills the house with riches brings honor to its inhabitants and removes all the cares and anxieties produced by sloth. The typical application of these two specific characters is too evident to need explanation. The example of the woman is very useful, as to the spirit of the thing, to one who labors in the assembly. The great use of the book to the Christian. Although in this book the wisdom produced by the fear of Jehovah is only applied to this world, it is on that very account of great use to the Christian, who, in view of his heavenly privileges, might, more or less, forget the continual government of God. It is very important for the Christian to remember the fear of the Lord, and the effect of God's presence on the details of his conduct, and I repeat that which I said at the beginning, that it is great grace which deigns to apply divine wisdom to all the details of the life of man in the midst of the confusion brought in by sin. Occupied with heavenly things, the Christian is less in the way of discovering, by his own experience, the clue to the labyrinth of evil through which he is passing. God has considered this, and he has laid down this first principle, wise unto that which is good, and simple concerning evil. Thus the Christian may be ignorant of evil, if a worldling were so, he would fall into it, and yet avoid it through his knowledge of good. The wisdom of God gives him the latter, the government of God provides for all the rest. Now, in the Proverbs, we have these things in principle and in detail. I have not dwelt on the figurative character of the forms of evil. They are other principles than figures. But the violent man of the last days is continually found in the Psalms, and Babylon is the full accomplishment of the woman who takes the simple in her snares and leads them down to death, just as Christ is the perfect wisdom of God which leads to life. But these two things which manifest evil proceed from the heart of man at all times since the fall, only we have seen that there is active development of the wiles of the evil woman, to his her own house and her own arrangements. It is not simply the principle of corruption, but an organized system, as is that of sovereign wisdom, 